For at TV, the world is thinking. Reason is largely unconscious. It is physical, not abstract. It doesn't just fit the world as it is. It fits the world via frames, cultural narratives, and uh, metaphors. It's not dis unemotional. In fact, emotion is an implicit part of the same circuitry used for reasoning. And it's not just based on self-interest. It turns out it is uh, based as much on empathy and caring and connecting to other people. Why does this matter for politics? It's everywhere in politics. It turns out that conservatives and progressives have somewhat different uh, understandings of how they reason. They don't reason in exactly the same way. I've written about this before. Uh, I've, as I pointed out, uh, in a book called Moral Politics, there are two modes of reason, what I've called strict father and nurturing parent models of the family that are metaphorically projected onto uh, our political life. What's interesting about the recent work is, of course, we all learn both of them. That is, we're in the same culture, we learn both modes of reason, and so you could be, for example, progressive and nurturant in every part of your life, but if you walk into an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie and you understand it, then you have a strict father view of the world. Somewhere in your brain, you have a, a neural system enabling you. You don't walk out of there saying, gee, what was that about? Okay. Now, w this is crucial because a lot of people reason in, on some issues, like a conservative, and other issues, like a progressive. And this is normal. It turns out, if we both have both models and they both apply to different issues, then what you have is quite normal. Uh, the idea that some people are uh, conservative about uh, the economy and um, progressive on social issues, or conservative about foreign policy and progressive on domestic policy, or um, conservative about, uh, let's say, progressive about almost everything, but they teach in the university and are strict fathers in their classroom. Now, all kinds of possibilities do occur. For example, consider Joe Lieberman and Chuck Hagel. Right? Hagel, against the war, very conservative. Uh, uh, Lieberman, for the war, uh, but um, relatively liberal. Relatively. But they don't agree on almost anything. They're both called moderates. That is, there is no ideology of the moderate. They are just people who have both modes of reasoning in different areas. And that's important. Why does this happen with a the brain? There is a mechanism for it called mutual inhibition, where one, uh, where, um, one part of the brain can be active and inhibit another, or the second can be active and inhibit the first. And that's what happens when you have two mutually exclusive ways of thinking. And that's what we have about our politics. Now, that is important uh, in many, many ways. It means you don't just move to the right. There is no left to right spectrum. You know, you have people who are, um, you know, there's all kinds of com combinations and possibilities.